Okay, in this video we're going to be taking a very basic look at keyframings and exploring exactly what they are using ProShow Producer. I'm actually using version 4.5 here, but this is essentially the same throughout the various different versions of ProShow Producer. First of all, let's select the background. This one here is looking pretty handy, so dragging, dropping that into slide number one. We're going to be using our balloon. Now this is a PNG file, so it's a transparent background. There's our balloon. Just going to press control, drag, drop it into frame number one even, and there it is. It's arrived. Double click in, brings up the slide option, and there it is. And this under the effects, under the motion tab, is where we can see the first of how keyframing can really work. This is keyframe, this is position number one, the start position. This is the end position, keyframe number two. The little tab down here is showing us, there it is, there's our keyframe, and there's our keyframe number one. If we click on this, if we drag it to the side, that's the start of keyframe number one. There's the finish position, you'll note they're both highlighted in gold. So if we just click play, through this comes starting off and then finishing in the center. But of course you can take it a lot further. You can even take it to the other side. Just click in and play, and now our balloon's just going to go uh, briskly across our landscape. Job done. Or is it? If you click on this little magnifying glass here, this is going to open it up. This is our preview for our motion keyframe. Again, this is just showing exactly as we had before. The balloon's going to come across, right across there in the center, and fading out where you can see the slide time in here. There's the transition time. We're going to change this. Let's take this up to 15. So it's going to be 15 seconds. Just click down. You can see the way that now opens out. There's our first keyframe. There's our second keyframe, our end keyframe. If you click on this, there it is. We can lift this up. One word of uh, sort of advice, warning, <laughs> call it what you will. If you go to click on this, what happens is you actually select the background. So make sure you're working on the right layer and you click the tab that you want to work with. There it is number one, keyframe number one. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a flight, we're going to take off, we're going to come up to this position here, we're then going to come across before landing down in this field. So we need to add some more keyframes. Now if you right click, you can select insert multiple. Now we've already got position number one, position number two. So one, two, we need four, so I'm going to add another two. With the two we've already got will give us our four clicking down, they've arrived. You'll notice, there it is, if we click on number two, let's lift number two up into that area like this, click on number three, move this across to that area like that, click on number four, and we can now drop this down, and we're gonna land in that field like that. Clicking again on number one, let's just take a look. There's our start position, a bit big, so we're going to come to the little framework we got there. This is going to change the zoom X and Y. So we're going to drop it down to that sort of area like that would be pretty good. This is where we're taking off from. You'll notice the figures have dropped down there in the zoom X and Y. Position number two, we're flying up to there. Position number three, we're getting larger, coming to that position there. Position number four, dropping down. Let's drop the scale down to that sort of area that would be pretty good. Just lifting that up a little bit. So if we click on number three, and that's the reason. Deliberately made that mistake to show you <laughs> to make sure that you click on the tab and not on the image as I just did. You'll notice this has dropped down in size. I'm just going to come in, that's 20. That's the one we put in for the base one. Just make that larger there. Just checking that out. Clicking, there's the smaller one. So just checking that's back to being the large size. That's the intermediate size. You'll notice the zooms change in there. And this one, there's our start position. Let's click play and see. Off we go. Nice smooth takeoff over the frame. Out into the outer reaches, coming through to the top there. Drifting, you'll notice it's got a nice curve to it. As it comes down, it's not just the balloon, but the flight path I'm talking about. As it drops down, that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at this curve. You can see I haven't touched anything. This is the natural way it put it in. This is the smoothing. We're on position number one there. If we come to the smoothing, if I bring that out, you'll notice the line going out even further. Bring it back to the left. You'll notice that line becoming straighter. So if I move it right the way across to zero, what's going to happen now when you click play, it's virtually going to go straight up, 
keeping just inside the frame there, that looks pretty good. Round the top like that, as it gets larger at this point, now dropping down, coming out over the frame, this area here. Want to bring this side in a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on keyframe number four. You can see there it is there. That's the smoothing. The default is 50. Taking it to the right, don't forget, gives it a wider angle. Bringing it down is going to give us a steeper angle for our descent. That looks pretty good like that. I think what we'll also do is click on number three, dropping this in a little bit. Clicking on number two, dropping that across a little bit like that. Now let's click play. So that's now going to come up. It should stay just inside. That's fine. Just coming a little bit over the edge. I like that a little bit of an out of the frame effect. Through we go. That's its largest. Then before it begins to descend down. Great stuff. Looks pretty good like that. You can, of course, you can come in. If you just bring your cursor, hover it over, you see there's keyframe number one, showing us the time is 0, 0.00, etc. This one is five, nearly six seconds. This one's going to come in at, there it is, nearly 12, and this one at 17. You can come in, you can, of course, click on these, and you can bring them to make the flight between this one and this one much faster. So now when we click this, you'll notice it comes up here, that's slow there, between number two and number three. It'll now get sunny, you know, sudden gust of wind through its shoots, and coming to number three, it begins to descend, and down we go. That's using keyframes. I think I actually prefer that just a little bit longer. It's about 12 seconds, wasn't it? Something like that would be pretty good. Job just about done. So don't forget, check out the smoothing. We're on position number three there. Again, it's on the default of 50. You can, of course, if you move this, you'll notice the way it's moving and creating straight lines between almost position number two. You can see we've got a straight line coming through here. You've got a straight line coming through there. So you can, in fact, give a square look if you really want to. For example, if we click on this, clicking down, moving that in like this, this is now going to give us a quite a sharp flight path. We're going to go straight up, hit the corner any second, dodge across to the other side. We shall hit keyframe number three and drop down, whoops, there you go. And that's using the smoothing set on zero. I think I prefer a slightly sort of smoother ride myself, so let's just bring that out, give a bit of more of a curve to that area there, and click on number three, doing exactly the same. So you can affect the smoothing, effectively giving you the sort of uh, the angles you want to bring yourself around, etc., etc. Just play with it. It really is. It's a great tool. Of course, we're using the balloon here. You could be using whatever you want in your pictures, but it really can bring your slideshows or help bring your slideshows to life. There it is, just going through. Not going to go through this uh, again, but just showing the way that you've got a nice curve coming through there. That looks pretty good like that. And then begins to descend. Job done. Click in, close. Oh, one other thing. If you click hide, that hides the panel over there on the right hand side. Click in show brings back all these. So it just gives you a bit more of a larger sort of preview area. Click in close brings you back. There are your keyframes. Position number one, two, three, and then we got four over here, three and four. If you click on them, exactly the same thing. You go straight through to the background. So make sure you're working on the layer. And if you want to make any changes, you can, but click on the little sort of tabs down here. Don't click on the image itself as I just did to show you that you go straight through to the background. <laughs> so that's showing you the keyframes. That's keyframes, the basics. One other point is if I just come and click on sort of number one, nearly clicked on the image, the smoothing, the motion speed here, the pan is set for smooth. When you click play on this, it's going to take off and you notice the way it suddenly gets a little bit faster. If you want to maintain the sort of uh, the motion as a steady flight path, as it were, as a steady motion right the way through from beginning to end. Try setting the pan to linear. This will now take off. It'll all be a constant speed throughout. The same goes the smooth is, of course, as we got sort of bigger and smaller. I'm leaving it as it is. It works quite nicely with that. But there it is. That's the basics of keyframing, of course. There's no stopping now. You can sort of take it as far as you want to. We will be doing that in other videos, uh, but for now, I'm just going to click OK to that. Wish you all happy imaging. Take care. Speak soon.